Hello, everyone, and welcome to our mobile mapping webinar on the software updates for mobile mapping products. My name is Victoria Gadaychuk, and I'm doing product management for Trimble Mobile Mapping Solution. And today I am on this call with my colleague Miguel Para, who is software engineer, and we will uh, we are pleased to present the uh, latest and best in our software solutions today. Before we are moving forward with the content, if uh, you could uh, give us some note, if you can hear us clearly and you can see a uh, screen well, uh, please use question tab chat tab for providing your feedback. Okay, thank you. It looks all good. We are set. And with that, let me go to agenda. We move forward. Uh, yeah, it's okay, it's okay. So uh, first of all, uh, we want to introduce the Trimble mobile mapping workflow to our today's attendees. And uh, some of you could be already familiar with it. Uh, some of you are not uh, so uh, happy to talk about that. And then we will be talking about a recent update on the Podpack software, Trimble Business Center, on uh, Trimble MX software. And also we will mention some new license models which are available um, today for our users. Next slide. So on this slide, you can see the workflow uh, Trimble is covering for mobile mapping solution. So basically it's from the field to deliverables. And in the field, we are using TMI field software for MX7 and MX9. It's very flexible as it's a web application. So one can operate system from basically uh, any device. Uh, could be a table, a tablet, could be a laptop, or could be even mobile phone. Um, then uh, we are processing our trajectory in post-pack MMS software to achieve better positional accuracy of the trajectory. In Trimble Business Center, user can compute scans, register data to point cloud, also register run to run in case runs have been collected at the different time and there is slight disalignment. So user will align data perfectly well to bring it to their required accuracy. Also in Trimble Business Center, uh, People can uh, produce such a deliverables like uh, point cloud imagery, but also some vector data. And uh, this is for people who are working on uh, CAD applications and work, uh, coming from the engineering world. I will show you something on TBC, what TBC can do with mobile mapping data today. And of course, uh, Trimble MX software suite. This is a solution uh, we are recommending for feature extraction and asset management works. It has very powerful GIS component, which allows customer to extract feature with the full attribute set and allows flexibility to manage attributes as well as the filter based on attributes. But also the strong component of this software is Trimble MX Publisher. And Trimble MX Publisher users can share the data across of the organization, but also connect to the popular GIS and CAD environments to perform even some feature extraction. Uh, we are not blocking users with our software suite and of course data can be used in the system of preference like uh, Autodesk, Bentley, Esri, TerraSolid, TopoDot, TiteVision and so on. Uh, <clears throat> now on a post-pack update and here I would like to highlight some two features to you. Next slide please. Um, with this uh, improvements, you can see on my slide now, it basically states that the method of filtering and smoothing data were refined in order to enhance the overall quality of the process trajectory. Uh, we will be uh, having the next technical webinar where we are pleased to share more details with you, but overall the, uh, with the enhanced algorithms, we are able to achieve the really great accuracy of our mobile mapping trajectory. And uh, what's more happened to Postpack, the new source of precise ephemeris has been added now to Postpack and HTTPS protocol is used. It can be used uh, by user for automatic as well as manual downloading of satellite coordinates directly to the project. That's the uh, improvements on the Postpack. 
And now I would like to talk to you about updates on Trimble Business Center. What's new and what team was able to achieve last few months. Some features first specifically for mobile mapping users. You know that the TBC is a big software, is used by surveys, by different uh, Trimble equipment, and basically it allows to merge of different Trimble tools and hardwares and um, make a use of all of them in Trimble Business Center. Uh, great value of uh, this software platform. And for mobile mapping, I will show you some samples on my next slide, but Tim was able to achieve a better, um, better view of planner cameras for MX9 specifically. Um, now, automatic histogram stretch uh, to, has been applied and um, it caused that images, areas which have been in the shadow before, and it was really tricky to recognize features. Now they are visualized in much, much better way. Also, uh, continuously working on the user experience improvement, and now TBC allows visualize runs in a better way by automatic coloring of the runs. So it allows people to uh, manage their project and their data in a better way. Uh, next function I want to mention, which is also very important and safe people who is registering to ground control point a uh, huge time that now they can recall of ground control point registration and that allows to roll back registration actions. So basically they are able to edit registration and remeasure or repeat any points uh, of presentation. Here you can see improvement on the visualization that has been happened in uh, TBC. And you can see that each run of my mobile mapping commission now is visualized in a, a unique way by color, very simple and visually understandable, very clear way. And uh, along with that, customer has an option to see the name of the data and some metadata uh, like uh, uh, date and so on. And uh, this allows also before you are processing the data that allows you to get the feeling how big your run is, uh, what the area you would like to process exactly. Do we want to present all of them or would you like to process a specific run and you can see the location of this specific run to build much better intuitive link to the project explorer. And here, as I mentioned, the uh, great benefit because it allows actually to deliver you more information from the imagery. You see before um, we had in TBC issue with planner cameras of MX9. Uh, on the top of this slide now, uh, it's very hard, it's very difficult to recognize almost any feature under the, um, which are located in this shadow. And on the bottom part of the slide, you can see how the same picture is visualized with the recent uh, enhancement that has been implemented. So more uh, vis uh, better visualization means more data delivered out of imagery today, better inspection and orientation uh, in the mission, mobile mapping mission. Reset already measured ground control point. Uh, lots of uh, MX9 customers today are registering their data to uh, ground control points. And uh, especially this function is useful for the large projects where you are, uh, where a user is using uh, multiple ground control points, sets of them, uh, lots of them. Uh, I'm using here example like a 50, 100, but for some, sometimes it could be even more, sometimes it could be less. Anyway, uh, all users will benefit out of this uh, from this enhancement because now if any of point has not been picked correctly or measured correctly, something went wrong and you can see that your registration uh, result is not satisfactory for you. You can recall registration, go one step back and basically remeasure or edit your registration, remeasuring and reset the problematic point. The next one. Uh, worth to mention, obviously, uh, enhancement on TBC in general. Uh, 
I want to mention here new uh, subscription licensing. Now we have an option um, to go for annual subscription. Uh, that means that customer will get a uh, one year uh, license. And that basically provides user with them more flexibility when planning their investment. Uh, for more details uh, in that regard, please contact your Trimble representative, uh, Trimble, uh, Trimble partners on Trimble sales team. Uh, power line extraction. Uh, also, I would like to mention it because uh, if you are working with some plan and need the drawing of the power lines, the tool uh, to extract them in a semi-automatic way is available now. Uh, and um, um, we can show you um, a bit later in a second how does it work like. As well uh, as uh, curb and gutter extraction. So you see that now more automatic extraction uh, is coming and it's, uh, it's working and can be applied for mobile mapping data as well. For um, those who are already uh, familiar with uh, TBC or just entering the world of TBC, we also have a learning course available. So you can see now um, at the item four, you can see a website, learn.trimble.com. And there you will find the course, which is called Essentials TBC, which opened the door in TBC world and allows you to learn software step by step. Miguel, if you could run the video now for power lines, previous slide, just to show uh, to audience how Something is not working for us. Um, no worries, we will publish these tutorials on our channel. So uh, welcome, uh, visit and see how tools are performing. Sorry for again for our technical issues today. Uh, curb and gutter extraction. Um, you can see it's extracted with only four points, but on the right uh, image, you can see the alignment which uh, has been created by just making those three, three clicks quite accurate and easy to use. The next one, please. Um, with that, it was all on uh, Trimble uh, Business Center. Uh, more automatization, more uh, extraction uh, and enhancement for uh, current functionality. Uh, now let me cover Trimble MX software. You know, this is the powerful software for asset management and feature extraction. It allows customer uh, extract assets in a very efficient way, but also manage them. It has a um, strong uh, component, which also allows you to filter on, uh, on based on attribute. It allows you to um, connect to the uh, existing geo database if, if any is used by your organization and your task is to maintain it today and update rapidly. And let me start with uh, new features and enhancement on the TMX desktop products. Um, I will not probably go into uh, deep details here, but uh, wanna say that team is working uh, on the uh, improvement on data management uh, and especially that makes sense for uh, users who are using then the publishing functionality right and now uh, you can specify tags for any resource that allows you to combine data filter data and manage data in a better way for publication to share data via web with your co-workers and also for feature extraction, one of the key components, and that's what we are always ask for uh, improvement is the navigation. It's it's very important component because uh, as fast and efficient you can navigate through your data as less time you're wasting, of course, in the office for feature extraction. Uh, TMX uh, provides uh, very good navigation tools and now even better because um, now you can focus on an object you can see on my screen now, on Miguel's screen. You can focus on object uh, from the multiple views and perform measurement or extraction out of any of them. 3D view, image view, or uh, slice view in that case. Uh, and when moving uh, along the trajectory or to the different feature, all of your views now can be synchronized and will be moved to the certain point together. 
very efficient navigation for massive feature extraction workflow. On the usability, also we have now added like a better zooming, um, new icons uh, for each type of the data, basically less clicks, more, uh, more results. Uh, next, uh, next thing I would like to talk uh, to you about is the rail track extraction for uh, rail mapping uh, of the railway and uh, asset management on the railway. Um, before that was the case that uh, we needed to um, connect or we needed to snap one feature to another from the rail uh, track in a kind of uh, manual way. So it was not good uh, obviously for mapping purposes. And now uh, it has been enabled uh, that tool is following already extracted feature, aligning it perfectly in, in XYZ. I will show you it on the video. Uh, you know, the big benefit of it is um, you can extract the very long linear project like a rail track, right? It's long and you can extract it only with three clicks, saving effort and the time and obviously cost. And uh, also now it, this tool can be running along the re uh, reference line. It could be vector or it could be trajectory. In my case, I think the trajectory makes more sense because it allows me to follow exactly the trajectory of my movement, the way the vehicle is moving. And that means that in case my rail is coming to two directions later on, tool is not getting confused. And with this line referencing, it's possible now to extract longer, uh, longer linear objects a uh, longer rail track as it was possible even before. Miguel, if you could start the, to, to play this short video, I want just to show you guys how, how new alignment is working. And for those who is not familiar with, uh, you, cannot, you cannot start the... I'm afraid I cannot play the video from here. Give me just one second, if I get it working. This is very strange. Uh, it looks we never had this issue before. Thank you. So now you can see that only with three clicks software is able to extract the long rail track. Let me make here the three clicks. So I just need to define the direction of the extraction. And we will tool is now running and extracting my, my rail track. With that, you can see that seven, uh, almost 750 meters have been extracted by a user just making a three clicks but now uh, we want to extract the rail track in the opposite direction and therefore we would like to uh, ensure that snapping will be working and our new linear feature will be aligned perfectly well with already existing. Um, that will cost me one additional click in the center line. And now two is running to the different direction. Second feature has been extracted, and now you can see slightly rotating the point cloud that the X, Y, Z are perfectly aligned and snapped. And just opening attribute table and checking it, you can see two features have been added, length and defined uh, attributes have been, uh, has been filled in. For uh, rail asset management now, faster and uh, hopefully easier for uh, alignment and creation the map. The next one. And the next one is uh, uh, obviously improvements more, more and more on automatic feature extraction. Lots of mobile mapping data can be created easily today 
but amounts of this data are asking for automatization in the office software. They are asking for automatic feature extraction and uh, more tools, simpler tools. And here I want to say that in Trimble MX software, we can um, today extract in an automatic way uh, road signs, poles, and uh, trees. And any automatically detected features can be brought today to standard asset inventory procedure of TMX that allows customers to inspect detected features in an efficient way, as well as to play with attributes, adding the new one and uh, all maybe screenshots or maybe point cloud to fully benefit from the uh, well-established JS workflow in TMX. On a tree analysis, this is the beta function, but we uh, want to give it to users as we find it's working well now. And obviously happy to um, get your feedback uh, if there are any. So tree uh, extraction is uh, important for uh, some city planners and customers who, uh, who is connected to trees uh, planning their infrastructure. And uh, I hope, Miguel, you can uh, run this short video again to show to people how uh, Trees Analysis tool is working. And today we also can add the point cloud extraction or selection to uh, each of detected features. That means if you would like to uh, bring point cloud of the extracted features to uh, your next software, to your software of destination, you can do it today. So here I'm just selecting the uh, proper extension, trace analysis. I'm selecting the point cloud I want to run my extraction based on. And I want now to select the path. Could be any, but I would like to use trajectory in that case. Just existing, so this case let's afford. Be careful with the... Uh, range you are specifying for the tool because obviously if it's uh, too big or uh, not reasonable enough then the automatic detection will take a time i want to get the point cloud selection exported and linked to my extracted feature by the id so now starting extraction you see it's going really fast my tree is now detected if you can see that the pole has not been detected, so smart uh, tool is smart enough to differentiate between pole and tree, which is good. Uh, changing the legend, so you can see my extracted uh, trees also on mobile mapping view in a better way than they are now. And also, I want to show you that point cloud selection has been uh, added. So now attributes. So you see that trunk diameters, trunk height, three crown diameters, the range and uh, inclination has been added automatically as per my default layer setting. And point cloud is also now generated and linked to my feature. So just bring in the small point cloud file. And this file is av available to export in various formats to be further used as needed in any other software. Uh, <clears throat> so this was about trees detection. Again, new measure functionalities. Now it's a semi-automatic tools, but uh, st still increase, increase user productivity. Uh, that has been introduced a um, new uh, volume series tool. So you, I will show you on the next slide and hopefully we are able to run a short video again. And also a new measurement tool for antenna. For this specific type of antenna, you can see on my screen, this is 5G antenna. Uh, so for this specific uh, kind of feature, we have a semi-automatic tool which allows to uh, extract linear features. Um, if you want to store them as a multiple features, it's up to user or they can be uh, saved as a single feature as well. More capabilities on formulas and attributing of the features. So now uh, mapping resource name 
can be saved as an attribute for uh, extracted features, which gives you an understanding what resource has been used to extract certain feature. And also for um, linear feature for the polylines, uh, now we have an option to save up to 20 vertexes uh, as an attribute. That means that if you have some important points, if you learn a linear feature like curves or any intersection, you can uh, save the coordinates x, y, z of this uh, vertex you are picking out of point cloud. The next one, please. So here a bit on volume and you can see it's not only one tool, it's a really uh, line of the tools of the semi-automatic tools and uh, obviously it provides customer with the flexibility it depends on how easy it is to access feature from the point cloud. If there are any interruptions, any other features which are hidden the uh, object of the interest, uh, you would select the proper tool to extract volume. And Miguel, if you could run my short video, uh, I want to show how uh, to extract uh, volume uh, taking an electrical box as an example. And let's imagine I have some electrical or telecommunication uh, box and I want to check the volume uh, in relation to number of conductors, for instance, if I have them in my database already in my documentation. Sorry, Victoria, I'm afraid this video is now running. Okay. Um, no worries. I want to uh, apologize once more, and uh, we will be placing those tutorials on our YouTube channel. Please stay tuned. Uh, and uh, also, for more details, you could always uh, visit our web page with the webinar recording stored. And there was a technical webinar recently done by our technical support team. And in that webinars, you can uh, get the uh, perfect example and knowledge how a semi-automatic volume extraction is working in TMX today. Uh, so uh, please forgive us, but there are resources available uh, we, are, we are happy to refer to today. Uh, TMX and improvement on database connection. So uh, for big companies, uh, government companies or service providers, which are maintaining already existing geospatial database, it's very important to provide the rapid updates of existing data. And mobile mapping uh, suits uh, this uh, task very well. And TMX uh, is allowing users to connect to the existing database. Uh, it's a Microsoft Access, it's the uh, Oracle, it's PostgreSQLite. Uh, and others. Uh, and now the workflow has been simplified. So now you, sh uh, you have an option to not only create the layers and merge them and manipulate in a manual way, but also to enhancement. I love them. It's a new vector database resource and new vector database resource connection. That means that you could create the layer and already during the creation, you could place them uh, to uh, existing database. Uh, less clicks, le less manual works, but that would lead that whatever is extracted in uh, Trimble and Mac software will be stored and will be updated in your uh, current database your organization is using. Okay, the next one. Uh, more also uh, updates for uh, guys who are more looking into some engineering type of work. So uh, some enhancements on the profiles, uh, profiles and cross sections. Uh, <clears throat> with the slice now, if somebody is interested to measure from, uh, you can change the slice height. And on the profiles and cross sections, it's now possible to export point cloud. Uh, the point cloud will be exported um, will be exported for each section, uh, but also for all of them. So multiple files will be created, and for each profiler uh, profile uh, that will be report generated. And report is um, very important for people who are looking into specific things. Um, Report contains the date of the creation, the username, the coordinate system, length, width, and height, uh, dimensions of your profile, uh, profile or section, 
and also it uh, provides you drawing the schematical view uh, of your uh, section as well if you are measuring the points on uh, using your profiler let's say uh, curves something else so as a result you will get uh, XYZ distance between two measured points and you also will get the slope between those points. So um, very useful information for some uh, road works. Next one, please. Uh, just shortly to mention on a set uh, model or client server updates. Um, in the past, we were using uh, administrator tool which is uh, which was based on uh, adopt flash player and uh, probably you could hear that uh, it was placed end of life in january this year so and uh, yeah uh, engineering team had done an effort and they uh, they were able to rebuild application and now it's a standalone tool it's a desktop and uh, administrator will be running the tool based on adopt air app um, no changes due uh, to the functionality and uh, as usually great tool for massive feature extraction projects and administrators still uh, will be uh, using just a new tool but still will be able to set the workspace, uh, users and resources to perform a feature extraction project. So no changes for functionality here. Um, next tool in our software suite for next product is Trimble MX Content Manager. And uh, I want to highlight that this is important tool to manage your data. Uh, if you have a massive data, which is the case for lots of mobile mapping users, uh, and for instance, you would like to uh, structure it in a proper way for feature extraction or for publishing, then Content Manager will be a great tool to structure and organize your data. And uh, today, uh, more tools in connection to publisher to prepare your publication in an efficient way have been added. Uh, new extension, which is called Mass Creator. So no need to go to some folders anymore stored on your PC and to manipulate this file. So you can just open extension and tool will show you. Uh, how to deal with masks and which uh, which files need to be modified and will store uh, changes automatically for you. Uh, could be in case of mobile mapping, it's unwanted part of the vehicle or of, of the system if you don't want them to be published or to visualized or shared outside of a uh, working team, let's say. So mask creator extension has been added. Annotations tools. Uh, Annotations tools um, important to help you to filter your data in a better way, to uh, understand kind of uh, what is this about. Uh, and with annotation tools, customer is uh, able to create their own annotation library today. And this library could also include the 3D models. And with 3D models, you just need today drag and drop in Content Manager, and it will generate all corresponding files automatically to properly visualize data in Trimble MX Publisher. Also, uh, I'm happy to see a multiple enhancement on data management. So now uh, you can in catalog filter data by type, aerial, or mobile mapping. At also new uh, content manager is providing better management of the imagery. So uh, if you need the process imagery for publishing or for better performance in the desktop tool, now you can do it not only for all of the sensors together, but also sensor but by sensor. So it simplifies work for the person who is preparing data for further action, feature extraction or publishing. And with content manager, or content manager brings me to the uh, point uh, of data sharing, of the need of the data sharing today via web. Uh, especially nowadays, if you think that lots of people uh, are in need to access data and information remotely, Trimble MX Publisher is a great tool which allows you to uh, store data on a server, company server, and share it with the co-workers. 
Uh, let's uh, imagine that it could be some external field uh, inspector which need to go to feature by feature in the field and check what uh, work needs to be done here or confirm what's uh, wrong or what's good with this uh, feature like pole or la uh, lamp pole in case it's broken. It could be some internal engineer of your organization who is performing some feature extraction and maybe using plugins for that uh, to store somewhere in ArcGIS or CAD environment the result immediately and benefit uh, from the ArcGIS or CAD environment and tools at the same time. Or um, that could be uh, some uh, guy who is working in different department but could benefit out of the same data uh, and uh, one team is looking for uh, electricity, other team is looking for some water infrastructure, but you still could benefit out of the same data published in the web and connect and make use of it. Uh, now, uh, we have introduced multiple improvements for publisher administrator or administration. That means that now it's more simpler to, uh, to handle the big number of users for publication or big number of resources. So now it's, uh, um, it can be set in an easier and important is in a safe way. Also, administrator can manage the timeline for public publication. That means that now uh, data can be published year by year and if your organization is monitoring changes and has the data let's say uh, one year old and is collecting the new data uh, next week you will be able to visualize all and new data set one by one to monitor changes. Uh, my colleague Miguel will show you some example of uh, this presentation how that could look like in the web uh, and uh, yeah, now administrator also has more uh, control on publication to see uh, how publication is used and basically by whom, as well as you can uh, make your publication uh, nice and uh, customize it for your organization specifically need, for instance, adding your logo on top of it or adding uh, contact information of your uh, publication administrator. So now it's customized and your users will be guided uh, to you directly if you want via web, no need to follow up on uh, email for the first stage in that case. Uh, so the next one, please. And here I want to mention the improvement and changes of, from a user perspective. User, I mean, not the guy who is setting up the publication, but uh, the guy who will be using the data to inspect to compare or uh, to extract something out of it. And here, uh, nice improvements have happened and user can add local resources and save them temporary for the publication. That means if somebody has already created a layer, uh, it can be brought to the publication, no need to involve administrator for that. And you can see how the layer uh, corresponds the reality or the fresher data and you can also uh, plan for the updates or changes of your existing um, database. Uh, also uh, it's possible to share bookmarks that means if I am the uh, member of the team and I want to say something about specific location or about specific layer I can uh, share the bookmark in an easier way with my co-worker that means that they will be able to access publication exactly at the position and uh, exactly with the open view I was looking at it so they will understand uh, or they will have a direct access to the uh, features I, I want to then think about. Uh, snapshots, flying through options, so better user experience and better navigation as well, better performance of publisher uh, overall. So with this, I would like to hand over to, uh, to Miguel and Miguel will show you some sample of publication. How does it look like in the web and show you how you could manipulate with your data. Thank you, Victoria. Um, how you are seeing my screen. This is uh, Miguel from the Trimble mobile mapping team. Uh, today I just wanted to show you 
quickly how to use uh, all the functionalities that we have in the mobile mapping solution to publish and to share the data across your organization. So some nice tools that we have in TMX that is a TMX publisher. So as you might know, you uh, could share the data via uh, online where you could uh, actually create a publication with um, panorama images together with both point cloud and the planet images. And you could also enrich your data, your data set with some uh, base maps out of uh, raster files or even, uh, um, what's the name, uh, web map service. So you could actually have all of kind of these resources in your publication. And the nice things now is that you could not only have it all at once, but you could have it synchronized. So actually, if you navigate through your data in the panorama view, you will have the option to synchronize the views all together in the other views. So for example, here, if I'm interested to see at the road in the left-hand side, I will always be <laughs> synchronizing my planner camera with the left-hand side, uh, uh, taking into account that we are here using the MX-9 data. So we are using the high resolution of my planner cameras to get some details in uh, certain areas of my uh, project. Uh, same from the public, from the from the uh, point cloud. So if I navigate through the uh, point cloud, my images uh, and my panorama will be synchronized all together. And also, uh, we will, uh, for example, in that case where we we don't find a photo position for a specific location, we will need to use my focus view to synchronize and to visualize exactly in the uh, location that I wanted to do it. So, for example, now here I can I can use the the uh, planner image to uh, focus in this facet, for example. And as you see, my point cloud is uh, showing the whole uh, data at once. So, if I uh, if I want to have a clear view of this data, I can actually use a new functionality or a tool that um, a publisher offers us to create a a new view out of the point cloud by creating a, a slice view out of it so I can get maybe temporary uh, uh, away from this uh, point cloud view and get only focus in my uh, slice view so for, for example this one I can uh, if I'm interested to work only in those two images I can now just work again with uh, panorama and the slice view uh, what is, is nice also now that we could, uh, as Victoria mentioned, the way that we could share this information. So actually we could create a, a bookmark that is nothing but uh, a link that the, the, your colleague will be get. So you just need to uh, log this or share this link to the to your organization. And what is nice is it's like all the configurations created in the in that bookmark will be stored and will be pop up once you open the link. So in from this point, your colleague can take it over and, for example, work with the local resources that you have in your uh, machine. So that is actually one of the enhancements that we have in Publisher. So here, if we open our resource tab, we can use this new functionality to either load a uh, load vector files, raster files, or even a mobile mapping run that is locally stored in your machine so you can combine both data, the, the online data and the local resource. So this data, you could actually select one file at a time or multiple files that you could have it in a, in a specific folder. And in this simple example, I just saw, uh, load a, a vector file containing the facet, so I just can quickly check in my uh, rest, uh, vector data fit together with my uh, publication data or for uh, or inspection purposes, you could load any data and navigate it as you would navigate with any of the resources loaded in your publication. But uh, remember here that this one is local resource. So you could, this resource will be over once you log out from the publication. Yeah, that is uh, one of the ways that you could navigate through the, through the publication. Uh, another option, of course, is when you have the, the, the link to the publication. So, for example, if you allow me to move over to uh, this publication with a MX7 data, I have two images where uh, um, I can uh, visualize it in different, in different uh, not only different angles, but different uh, point in time. And 
obviously if I want also to be uh, focusing on a specific location I can additional to the link of the publication I can add the location or oh, sorry let me just copy quickly the location that I'm interested to um, so with the with the link I can easily add the X Y coordinates in a given coordinate system uh, for a specific purpose and if, for example in this in this publication a login is required which allow us to to give more security of the sharing data so we are go, uh, sharing a specific location where the not everyone can uh, access to it will be safe by sharing the data to uh, specific users so by giving a, a specific uh, coordinates I can navigate to this uh, location and now with the timeline option I can visualize two or multiple images with different time so for example we have here three different data sets one collected earlier uh, late in 2018 uh, on the left hand side and for example I can also in my in the right hand side I can set it up uh, with the data set collected in 2000 January 2019. Here you see that there is uh, almost no difference with the data set but what about if we can check now the data set uh, taken in uh, late 2019. Here we can uh, clearly see some difference in the road structure so some traffic signs have been, have been removed and um, by doing this uh, or by using this functionality you could uh, actually uh, check the data and do a quickly inspection of your data set by using the timeline option. Uh, same here, you could not only share the data through the to the bookmark, but actually you could save it in your uh, current session. So for example, if you are uh, uh, sharing the data across your organization, you could, uh, for example, remember that I log in as a Miguel here in my publication, so I, I could uh, store this publication as a bookmark for for my reference in the future. So I, the next time I um, that I log in into uh, into my publication, I will have all my 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 bookmarks here. I will uh, switch to a fresh publication to show you how it behaves. Because you please remember that you you are navigating with a specific location to, that might be uh, confusing for you uh, at the first glance so by starting for a new publication you will have here your uh, all your your uh, bookmarks so actually if you create the bookmark with uh, any specific location so for example here again doing some temporal analysis of the with the data set you could also include location and some annotation additional to to, to that so yes a good uh, uh, we find this tool very useful to uh, quickly check data and uh, share data across the organization. So hope I don't uh, went too much over the time and the explanation of the quick demo was uh, clear enough for you to get uh, introduced by the TMX software. So I will hand it over back to Victoria. Uh, please remember, if in any case of questions, let us know through the chat box. We will be happy to answer them at the end. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you for live demo. And if you could get back to the presentation, uh, because yes. I have seen that we have already uh, received some questions, which are the part of the, our presentation. So. Um, uh, we got the question where to get more data and uh, about the solutions and uh, obviously um, it's uh, information is available on our web page here on my screen you can see a link if you go to mobile mapping solution page you will find uh, under the each product already existing user story success story as well as the technical documentation like uh, uh, data sheets you will find some uh, application brochures which uh, will give you a better understanding or feeling of our products at the first stage and if we could go to the next slide this is our YouTube channel and uh, please visit, please subscribe and there you will also find some uh, videos from the field as well as a small tutorials of some tools and the recordings out of our essentials series of the webinars. Taking this change, uh, this chance, I would uh, I'm pleased to invite you for our next technical session which will be taking place on March 9th 
uh, registration link is already available at geospecial.trimble.com under the webinar section. Uh, so you will see uh, the registration link. Please go and register if you are interested in uh, getting more technical details. Um, and we will be talking about the most frequently asked questions and hopefully we will provide answers, clear answers to them. And also we'll be talking how a customer could increase their productivity with mobile mapping the data today. I will be happy to uh, see you there and to talk to you there. With that, we are done with our presentation and we still have eight minutes to go through questions, uh, quite a lot. So, uh, Miguel, what about we share them and I'm starting with the first question. Yeah, sure. um, first question we got is, can we detect ground control points automatically on the scan data and link them to known coordinates? Would you like to answer this? I think it's about the registration in Trimble Business Center part as we have been presented. Yeah, the, the detection of automatic targets is not yet implemented, but the, yeah, that's a functionality that we will have soon. But the, the, the one that Victoria presented actually is um, more helping the users to uh, do addition of the yes, previous uh, so work so you could improve or maybe edit some run measurement that you have it. So in terms of the GCPs, so actually the, about the, the, the points that you imported it. Yeah. Is the plan to able to uh, process MX2 data in TMX and TBC? Uh, MX2 data cannot be processed in Trimble Business Center today, but it's possible to bring MX2 data in Trimble MX software. You just uh, need to keep in mind that uh, automatic tool uh, might not work really well with MX2 data due to the density and accuracy of the point cloud. But uh, you can obviously perform the uh, manual feature extraction. You also could connect to the database and publish data in Trimble MX from MX2 system today. Uh, next question. TMX will work with both scanning and image data. Yes, this is correct. TMX is supporting both imagery and point cloud, and you can extract information out of both of them, and you can uh, make use of the uh, both type of the data at the same time. Uh, maybe you uh, can remember the screenshot we have presented when there were multiple views displayed, and uh, yes, TMX is supporting all types of mobile mapping data. So here, just maybe to add that some tools, uh, will apply for images and some tools for uh, point cloud, but as uh, also, for example, in T all the data that you see in TMX Publisher at the end in our demo is the same data you could manage actually in any desktop product. So meaning point cloud that images are all available depending on the mobile mapping uh, device that you are using. Yeah, thank you, Miguel. Within MX software, that features can be extracted automatically. For example, signs, hydrants, uh, guardrails, um, traffic uh, signals, and so on, including height. Uh, so in Trimble MX, you can extract features uh, with, the, um, uh, with the certain automatization level, but it could be full automatic extraction, we call it detection, or it could be semi-automatic extraction. And if you have seen how the rail has been, for instance, extracted, it was extracted using what we call semi-automatic tool. And we have those, uh, these tools also for uh, edges, for uh, curves. Uh, but also we have extension we call feature detection. And this extension includes also road signs and poles. And what you should be doing there, you should specify the area you want to extract your features uh, from and uh, specify parameters for the software to uh, provide software with the information about what exactly it should be looking for. Uh, yes, and uh, signs available, hydrants not yet, uh, uh, guardrails, uh, rail thread can be extracted with three clicks. Um, Traffic signals, uh, yeah, road signs 
fraud signs can be extracted today, uh, not the really uh, traffic lights. Uh, yeah, and including height, yes, measurement tools are providing you option to, uh, to extract height information as well. So yeah, so the, the, maybe to add here that you could on, you could not only extract the geometry, but you could also uh, set up automatic um, formulas to store those uh, attributes, like uh, including the height. So depending on the tool again here that you use, you will store the height of the pole or the height of the traffic signs, the length of the any any of the uh, traffic uh, the road markings that you do. But yeah, the the height of, of course x y and X, Y, Z, and height is uh, included automatically. Yeah. Thank you, Miguel. Um, how large are the files? Uh, do they work online or they use the memory of the computer? I think it's about TMX. And uh, TMX uh, can handle today uh, really large files we are not aware of a size limit if everybody uh, if anybody is overcoming it that we are happy to know but uh, large point cloud and imagery data can be handled today yeah mm -hmm. i think the, uh, about the size of the project is no limit about the memory size so i guess here is more important to uh, data management of your project uh, about the point cloud is actually no limit in the size of the point cloud, so you could have a, a big project in only one OPC file that is the the proprietary format of TMX, so that it, it could handle it, uh, big uh, areas. And also, for example, for visualization purposes, in, the, in, 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 in TMX uh, publish and desktop application will apply the same, so there are actually not, no. Uh, limitations in size rather than in uh, how you organize your data so they can be displayed properly yes is but also there... be aware that they in sorry Victoria, that in general uh, mobile mapping uh, is a uh, 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 technology that consume a lot of data so it always requires not only because the the software is only be, is because the data itself is big yeah and so let's just uh, remind uh, people that uh, we, we are always talking about importance of the data management uh, starting from the field so you also uh, need to uh, uh, need to be careful with the planning commission from the date uh, from uh, from the field and tmi software is allowing today to manage uh, trajectory with import of kml to know where to go and collect the data in what way exactly but uh, yeah also uh, our uh, certified trainers are training our customers how to collect the data in a way do not struggle them in the office uh, let me uh, be quickly here and uh, guys if we don't have a time to answer all of your questions uh, we will follow up uh, by email with you thank you for understanding uh, is there an easy way uh, to uh, diminish the number of points on a point cloud to obtain a simplified curve or surface? I'm not sure I understand to what this question relates to. I, I, uh, if I understood well, is maybe uh, reducing the point density once you generate a surface. So, uh, uh, I think that will be possible in TVC that has some uh, tools to reduce the the point cloud density. In TMX, we don't have such a tool to reduce the point cloud rather than a classifier mm -hmm. or define it as a terrestrial data set or mobile mapping data set. So there are some uh, threshold values already defined there, but in, TM in TVC for sure that could be done. Thank you, Miguel. Can TMX do classification classification based on image only? Uh, in this case, MX7. Not yet. Uh, it's not possible. Uh, quick answer. Uh, yeah, but uh, I don't I don't understand the question about classification to classify images only. I, I think uh, it's meant uh, automatic detection here. I'm not sure, but uh, so. Um, yeah, uh, automatic extraction, if this is the question, I'm not uh, working based on uh, image-only data. Point cloud is required. 
uh, does TBC uh, can handle photogrammetry work uh, as uh, auto mosaic and 3D model and publishing? Uh, yeah, uh, TBC uh, now is uh, not handling the photogrammetry work uh, for MX9 in the same way as TMX does it. So we would uh, recommend the TMX for photogrammetry work uh, with uh, MX7 or MX9. Uh, and 3D model obviously can be uh, brought to TBC as well. Uh, TBC does not provide the publishing option, but it links to the Trimble Clarity where Point Cloud could be uh, visualized and shared. Will you share the recording with attendees? Yes, we will, and we will publish them on the web page. So you are welcome to uh, revisit our web page and view the recording after the session. I think with that we are done and uh, yeah two minutes over the time thank you all for attending this session today really appreciate it and hope to uh see you on our next webinar thank a lot thanks a lot thanks for my side and keep safe see you next time thanks for attending the webinar bye